up, S.E.Y. crew? How are you guys doing out there in TV land? I'm just kidding, y'all online. I know where y'all at. Look, I'm excited for tonight. And if you're, this is your first time coming here, we want to get you connected. So look, do me a favor, text this number, and this number will get you connected to a group. Because look, you can come and watch all day, but man, the big thing that happens, happens in groups, and we don't want you to miss it. So once again, the number is right here. Text this number, will get you connected. So we're in season two of Culture. And man, my homie Jared Moses from our East Valley campus is gonna come with some real keys about dealing with despair. I said despair, not hair. I know some of y'all have something with your hair. But look, you're not gonna wanna miss this message, so let's jump right into it. Yo, what is up, SCY fam? My name is Jared Moses, and I'm the youth lead at our Sandals Church East Valley campus in Mentone, California. And uh, I just wanna say, no matter where you're joining from, I'm pumped that you guys are joining along with us in week nine of our Cultured series. Maybe you can drop where you're from or where you currently stay in the chat or in the comments later, but wherever it's from, I'm stoked to be with you guys as we're jumping into week nine of Cultured, living for Christ in a world that doesn't. And a warning to those of you who are watching, we're gonna be talking about something pretty heavy today. We're gonna to be talking about despair. And the title of this message is actually Dealing With Despair. But I want you guys to hold on to hope because there is something amazing that God has for you in this message and in the scripture that we will be reading. And I also have a story that I wanna share with you guys, but before we get into that story, I wanna go over the scripture that we're gonna be reading from and focusing on. And that scripture is from Romans chapter five, verses six through 11. Starting in verse six, we read, when we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Jesus Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ made us friends of God. So now it's story time. I wanna tell you a little bit about my family. I'm the oldest of two brothers. And before my brother came along, my parents had me in 1992. And at the time we were living in a small mobile home. Wanting to grow their family, my parents worked hard and they saved up and they bought this awesome little home in San Bernardino, California. Big shout out to our San Bernardino campus, Dino. That's for you guys. And someone uh, once compared my life to a mantle or a shelf. And it, it's, it was so cool to see that because when we walked into this little home in San Bernardino, California, right above the fireplace, sat this modest little mantle. This shelf that depending on the time of year would hold many different things. Maybe it'd hold photos, maybe it'd hold stockings, and it would obviously hold the many trophies that my brother and I acquired throughout the years. And so someone once compared my good deeds and my relationship with God uh, to trophies on a shelf. They said, Jared, when you're born, there are rules to life, rules that apply to everyone. And especially as a Christian, as someone who holds ourselves to a higher standard because we are trying to be like Jesus. Uh, so you can imagine the trophies up on the shelf, right? Things like, I've never lied, I've never cheated, I've never disrespected my mom and dad. I've never been mean to anybody. And the list can go on. Well, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter three, verse 23, maybe you've heard the verse, that everyone falls short. Everyone sins and falls short of the glory of God. Everybody falls short of God's perfect standard. So what does that mean for us? 
It means that anytime we sin or do something that God has asked us not to do, a trophy has to be removed from that shelf. So when I called my brother that awful name, when I yelled and was being disrespectful to my mom, when I cheated on that test, that trophy had to come down from my shelf, from my mantle. It was one less trophy that I could hold up to God and say, look, look at all the good I've done. Isn't it awesome? And on the night before my 22nd birthday, I was hanging out with some friends and I acted out in a way that I was not proud of. In fact, it actually led me back to my parents' home in their room, just me and my dad. And I told my dad what I had done and I just began to weep. I was embarrassed, I was ashamed because I knew better. I knew that I was supposed to stay away from the thing I did. And as as I thought about it that morning, as I talked with my dad, I was reminded of this mantle, this shelf that once held all my trophies. And as I looked up at this mantle, I realized it was empty. I didn't have a single trophy left to lift up to God. At 22 years old, I felt like I lost the little bit of innocence that I had left. I could no longer pick a trophy up off that shelf and say, look, God, look at this thing that I did perfectly. And that wrecked me, you guys. Um, But I want to pause here in our story really quick, and I want to share our first point with you. It's this. Hopelessness is often the birthplace for hope. I want you guys to really focus on this thing my dad shared with me. As I sat there and shared and cried, my dad looked at me in the eyes and he said, Son, God still loves you so much. And my dad asked me, Did you ask for forgiveness? And I said, Yeah. He said, are you going to do it again? Do you plan to do it again? I said, no. He said, then son, you've already done everything that you need to do. Jesus covers the rest. Remember what we just read in verses 8 and 9. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. Now, I want you guys to know I grew up in the church. I knew about God's love. I knew about Jesus' love for me and his death on the cross for my sins. I shared it with my friends. I taught it to those younger than me. And guys, I believed every word that I shared. But it took me 22 years to fully understand that it is not about what I can do. It doesn't matter what trophies that I've kept on that shelf. The only trophy that matters is the one that says, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. That's the only trophy that matters. That's my prize. That is my treasure. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. If you are a Christian, there's two parts to your story, sinner and redeemed. You were once labeled a sinner, an enemy of God. God's love still existed for you. He still loved you so much, but his wrath burned against you. But we don't stop there. That is only the first half of your story. The second half is that when you placed your faith and hope in Jesus Christ and his sacrifice for you on the cross, the minute you did that, God removed the label that said sinner and put on a new label that said redeemed, a label that told him that you're covered, you're good. There was a high bill that you could not pay, but he cashed in all of it for you. You don't have to worry about it. And if you are listening now, and you are not a Christian, there is good news. The same thing is offered to you guys. There is a hope, and his name is Jesus Christ. When he died on the cross over 2,000 years ago, he didn't do it just for the people who call themselves Christians right now. He also did it with you in mind. Because he loves you, and he cares about you. So no matter where you are, If you are in despair, if you have lost hope and trust, let me challenge you to make the decision to place your hope and trust in Jesus. Give him the little bit you have left. 
because I believe that when you do that, those things will be restored in you. And the Bible says that you will be given a new life, one in the likeness of God in true righteousness and in true holiness. So no matter where you're at, know that there is a solution for you. God has an answer for you. And all he asks for in return is your adoration, your love, your respect, and your worship. So let your hopelessness be the birthplace of your hope in Jesus Christ. I love you, SCY, and God bless you guys. Man, what a strong point Jared made. He said hopelessness is often a place, a birthplace of hope. Man, this season has been so crazy. And I feel like some of this really landed home for a lot of you. It did for me. But look, we want you guys to be plugged into groups because this is a place where you can talk about it. Once again, that number is gonna be right here. And if this was your first time, we don't want you leaving and just saying, oh, this is a one message we heard and that's it. There's so much more we get to talk about where, where we get to really dive into. And look, you can be plugged in really easily by texting that number again or by just subscribing to our channels. If it's Instagram, if it's, if it's YouTube, whatever way, just stay plugged in. Man, it was so cool hanging out with you guys and I am so blessed to just get to be here with you. So we can't wait till you come back next week and we get to hang out some more. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.